This video breaks down the five best shooting techniques in soccer. But first, consider this. What is the best part of playing soccer? In an old video, I said it was scoring a goal, but I've grown and now I refuse to make claims that are not backed by research. So I conducted a research study in the most official way ever, using a YouTube poll. Scoring a goal is the best feeling in the beautiful game, isn't it? Since it is the best part, we need to improve our shooting technique so that way we can actually score more goals, right? And that's where this video comes in. The first shooting technique you need to master is striking the ball with your laces across your body. Whenever we think of someone shooting, this is probably the technique we see them using. And this is because it is the most commonly used technique in soccer. To master this technique though, we need to rewind a bit. Before we can worry about putting it in the top corner, we need to worry about our prep touch. To lace a shot across your body, we want to take our touch outside of our hip line and a few yards out of our feet. This is an important detail for allowing us to strike the ball with more power and accuracy. After setting up your shot with a good touch, you need to time your run up so that way you're striking the ball on the run. Do not stutter during your run up. This little stutter step slows down your momentum, giving the defender an extra second to put a block in. Since it slows your momentum though, it also decreases the amount of power you can get on your shot. Now we've taken a great touch and we're about to shoot. Freeze! Right here's a few important details. One, have your standing foot pointing in the direction you want the shot to go. As you can see, my foot is facing towards the corner of the goal since that's where I want my shot to go. And sure enough, that's where it goes. Secondly, when taking these shots, if you want the shot to go top corner, hit just under the midline of the ball. If you want your shot to go low, hit a little higher on the ball, just at the midpoint. Since we're striking the ball across our body, you want to strike the ball just outside of its midline. If you're shooting with your right foot, you want to strike to the right side of the ball. But if you're shooting with your left foot, then you want to strike just to the left of the midline. This causes the ball to go back across you and towards the far post. When shooting, strike the ball with this part of your foot and with your ankle locked. These details are crucial for having powerful and accurate shots. I cannot stress that enough. Without those details, your shots will never have the power you're working for. The last part of the shot is the follow through landing on your kicking foot. Don't overlook this piece either because it is also crucial for having powerful shots. Next up, we have the laced shot, but this time we're striking it straight or even slicing it away from your body. You might assume that this has the same technique as I just described, but it's not. Just like when you're lacing a shot across your body, you need to make sure that you time your run up properly without stuttering, as well as planting your foot a few inches from the ball and in the same direction you want the ball to travel. In fact, you even want to strike the ball with the same part of your foot while having your ankle locked and landing on your kicking foot. So where's the difference between these two techniques? It's all about where you're striking the ball and your follow through. In the previous technique, I told you that you want to strike the ball just outside of the midline. For example, when striking with your right foot, hit to the right side of the midline so that way the ball goes back across your body. However, if you want to strike the ball straight like this, you want to hit straight through the middle of the ball. If you want your shot to curve away from your body a little, then you want to strike the ball outside the midline in the opposite direction that you want the ball to travel. For example, if you're shooting with your right foot and you want it to curve away towards the right post, then hit left of the midline. The other difference in the two techniques lies in your follow through. If you want the ball to go straight, then have a straight follow through right through the center of the ball. If you want to increase your outward spin on the ball, then bring your foot across the ball from in to out as you make contact with the ball. So let's take a look at this again with your right foot. If you want the most curve with this technique, then hit left of the midline and follow through with your ball going from right to left. Now the next technique is the most beautiful in my opinion, and it's the curled shot. When this shot is executed properly, it is almost impossible for the keeper to save and it looks gorgeous. Now if you want a full video breaking down every detail of this technique, then watch this video. 
but I'm going to cover the key points for simplicity's sake in this video. For this technique, you want to approach the ball from a wider angle. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the prep touches of a lace shot across your body and a curler. As you can see, you want your touch to be even wider. One critical detail in this shot is your standing foot. As opposed to the other techniques we've covered, you want your standing foot pointing wide of the goal. Your shot will still travel in that direction at first, but then the curve of the ball will bring it back on frame. If you point your standing foot towards the goal, your shot will go straight down the middle and to the keeper every single time. Now you want to strike the ball on the outside of the ball, at or below the middle, with your toes up and your ankle locked. You also want your leg to have a swinging motion like you're wrapping your leg around the ball. This should come pretty naturally if your prep touch is taken wide, like I mentioned earlier. It's gonna take lots of time and practice repetitions to get the whip and the curl that you're looking for with these curlers. For them especially, have your opposite arm up to balance your body, which will help keep your body over the ball. If you don't bring your arm up, then you're more likely to lean back as you shoot, causing you to hit low on the ball and your ball will get lost in the woods. And if you've liked the video so far or learned something from it, please like the video. It's free and it helps me out a ton. Thank you. The fourth technique isn't one that I would tell you to go improve on your own, but it is a critical one to have in your locker for games. And it's the toe poke. I don't recommend using this technique from 20 yards out since it's hard to get enough power on it to score on a decent keeper. However, this technique is excellent because keepers do not expect it. But why does that make a difference? Well, unlike the other techniques I've shown so far, this one does not need a wind up at all. For those shots, you naturally wind up to get power on them. However, this technique, all you do is hit the ball with your toes as quickly as possible. This throws off the keeper's timing and can cause them to be flat footed, watching hopelessly as the ball goes past them. So use this in the box if you're in a congested area and don't have time to wind up and shoot since that may allow a defender to get a block in or the keeper to claim the ball. As for how to do this technique, it's pretty simple. Just punch the middle of the ball with your toes and land on your kicking foot. This makes it possible for you to take this shot naturally in your stride. Now if you want your shot to go to the right, then hit the left side of the ball and vice versa. For the last technique, I save the most important one to perfect and good news. It's also the easiest one to master. It is shooting with the inside of your foot. For this technique, you wanna be inside the 18 because it is difficult to get the power needed with it to score from outside the box. This is literally like making a pass. Lots of times when we're using this technique, we have an excellent opportunity in front of goal and it can even be a must score chance. So take a breath before you shoot, focus on making good contact with the ball and place it past the keeper. Just like with a pass, you want to plant your kicking foot beside the ball, pointing the direction you want it to go. And as you strike it, lean over the ball, hitting through the middle of the ball. Overemphasize leaning over the ball to help ensure your shot stays under the bar and you don't blow an easy chance. Understanding all the details is one thing, but it's completely different to master it and incorporate it into your game. If you want to score more goals, watch this video where I give you six game realistic finishing drills for you to use and put what you learned into practice. Thanks for watching.